Dr. Rhonda Roos is an educational consultant coaching principals, district leaders, and administrative teams in the complex and ever-changing world of leading schools. She's a former assistant superintendent in New Albany, Indiana, where she led curricular improvement, aligning those efforts with the district's progress in becoming a professional learning community. Rhonda has been an educator since 1983, serving as a guidance counselor, English teacher, middle school principal, and district administrator. She has taught graduate courses on leadership at Indiana University Southeast in New Albany, Indiana, and Spalding University in Louisville, Kentucky. Rhonda served on the leadership team of the Indiana Principal Leadership Institute and is a regular keynote speaker. Honors include the 2010 Indiana Middle School Principal of the Year, 2011 Solution Tree Redefining Excellence District Award, and the 2015 Indiana University Southeast Educator of the Year. Rhonda's book, published by Solution Tree, is titled The Deliberate and Courageous Principal. Rhonda's dissertation, An Examination of Principals in Effective High Poverty Middle Schools with High Achievement, was completed in 2014, and she co-authored the article in the NASSP, the bulletin entitled The Brain Compatible Secondary Schools, The Visionary Principal's Role. Welcome to the podcast, Rhonda. Thank you, Dana. I'm tickled to be with you today. Well, I'm excited to dive in to some of the topics uh, about leadership and about coaching principals and what they need uh, now more than ever. But we'll start off with, uh, tell me about a time when you were in the trenches and managed to crawl out. Okay. <clears throat> there could be so many stories, Dana, of being in the trenches and crawling out. But I think what I'll do is start with um, the first and largest trench that I knew I needed to crawl out of as a principal. And I think it was because it was so surprising to me. I had been um, a secondary English teacher for years, a guidance counselor for several years at the high school level and at the elementary level, and then an assistant principal. So I honestly thought, even though I never really wanted to be a principal, I thought I was kind of ready mm -hmm. to be a principal. And then in that very first year, Dana, is when things hit me so hard. So I guess let me explain it to you this way. I became so overwhelmed in my very first year of being a principal. I was new to the school. It was a middle school of about 900 kids. And I, I began taking notes on this pink legal pad. I'll never forget it. And as things would arise during the summer and during that first semester, so many items kept coming up and I would go, uh-oh, that's kind of a mess. Like, let's say registration. Way back in mm -hmm. the old days, Dana, everybody had to go in person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so registration was a mess. And then there was back to school night. And I remember putting that on the list, like, oh my gosh, that's a mess. Or, you know, schedules the very mm -hmm. first day. So I say all that to say, I knew I had been trained well through Butler University that a principal's role is to really be all around teacher instruction, and student learning. Mm -hmm. I know good and well that's what it's all about. I know that, as Simon Sinek would say, that's our why, okay? Mm -hmm. Are kids learning well in every single classroom in that school? And Dana, I got down in the trenches so deep and so low because I thought, I don't ever have time to get to that Mm -hmm. I was spending all of my time and all of my days being super busy mm -hmm. in the trenches, but not really ever, you know, getting into classrooms deeply. I could not even tell you, you know, how kids were learning. I had no idea. So the way I got out <laughs> is this way on that pink legal pad. I can remember seeing about 72 different items on that list. Mm -hmm. okay? And so I kind of, through my own way of organizing things, started calling those systems, mm -hmm. systems of Scribner Middle School. That was the name of the school. So it would be all of those different systems. And I made this big running list. Okay. So there were about 72 of them. And I thought, okay, I can't fix all of these at mm -hmm. one time. 
So each semester, I'm going to choose about eight or nine. I'm going to get my leadership team to help me with this. And then in about two years time, Dana, we had all of those systems strengthened. They weren't perfect, but mm -hmm. they were strengthened. Some of them, we didn't have anything like a new teacher induction program. So we had to start that one from scratch and build it. But every semester, we took on eight to 10 of those. Okay. And in the summer, we would work really hard. And then when those systems are built for a principal, you can quit that feeling of being busy all the time. And mm -hmm. you can get back to the real action of learning and teaching. Mm -hmm. I rambled on a lot right there, but that was so overwhelming to me. In the beginning, Dana, I almost thought about going back into the classroom to teach English mm -hmm. until I could figure out a way to address those things. Does that make yeah. sense to you, Dana? No, and I think there's a lot of people that get into the job and they're, they are overwhelmed by all those things, like you said, and whether people are using um, apps to, to keep track of the things that need to be done now or still writing it down on legal pads, I think like when you finally got kind of control of that, you can't take care of all of it right now, but, you know, delegating up um, what you're going to do per semester and also working with the team, right? Both leadership right. team and teacher leaders. And um, then you said you were able to think more about like serving the school, being that servant leader, getting into classrooms yeah. and helping teachers with instruction. Yeah, because I think really, Dana, now that I've been able to be in schools a lot more working with principals and their administrative teams, or a lot of times it's, I get to work with the principal and her leadership team. Mm -hmm. You can feel when you walk in a school building, if the systems are in place. Yeah, I mean, you can really feel it now. Things run more smoothly. Uh, there's a certain calmness and efficiency to the building. Not as many decisions have to be made by the principal and her team because you just quickly can pull up a system and go, oh, yeah, here's what we do. So mm -hmm. it's a really, um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say, Dana, is the most effective leaders that I've seen, they don't use the excuse anymore of, oh, I'm too busy to get in classrooms, or I'm too busy to sit down with grade level or department teams and talk about the data, or I'm too busy to hold teachers accountable to, ooh, we got to teach this a different way because our kids didn't get it. So we can't say anymore, I'm too busy mm -hmm. to do that really important work. We just need to, with our team's help, build the systems so we can get back to the real stuff. I think I think it's Tina Bugren. Um, she's a, an author uh, and consultant with Solution Tree. And she'll say, there is such a thing as decision fatigue. Mm -hmm. And so many principals and leaders are under that stress of making so mm -hmm. many decisions. Well, if your systems are built, it takes off so much of that mm -hmm. pressure of making mm -hmm. so many you know, decisions so quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a, a thing that a lot of uh, principals can definitely um, maybe learn from others, whether it's through a coach or uh, attending some PD on that. Um, I know you provide coaching. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but talk to me about your transition to your current role as a consultant. So you left uh, director of middle schools in your district. Um, was that in 2016 to become a consultant? Yeah, about, I started in 2017 in okay. January. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Dana, that was a very difficult decision for me. But um, as I look back now, about six years down the road, I'm so glad, honestly, that I had the courage to step out. I loved the district where I was. I had been a principal in the school for nine or 10 years and then moved to district office, working with all of the middle school principals and their teams. So what happened was I'd gone back to school to get my doctorate and I'd done qualitative research. Mm -hmm to go to different middle schools in the state of Indiana who had high poverty, that's anything above 50%, and high academic achievement on the state assessment. So mm -hmm. I was looking for schools in Indiana, high poverty, and an 80% or above on ELA and math, okay? okay? Combination of both. 
and first of all, Dana, the sad story is for us in Indiana at that time, there weren't very many middle schools that had that designation. So my advisor there through Indiana State, who happened to be Todd Whitaker, he was wonderful to me through this research. He said, okay, Rhonda, choose four, go visit them, go spend time with them at those buildings. So my district was good enough to allow me to go a few days to each one of these buildings and interview teachers, sit in classes, spend time with the principals. I think what I was trying to do, Dana, is figure out if I want my school, which had more than half of the children, right, on free and reduced lunch, to hit this 80% mark. And we were getting close, but mm -hmm. we weren't mm -hmm. quite there yet, especially in ELA. I wanted to know what are those principals doing that are getting their students to achieve at that high level? Is it, am I anywhere close mm -hmm. to what those people were doing? And so when I went to visit, um, I did find out many of them were following the PLC model, but I did find out, yes, they were doing many of the things I was doing, but Dana, it was at a much deeper, consistent day in and day out level that it almost shocked me. So it felt good. I thought, okay, yeah, they're doing the same things we are, but they were doing them with much more deliberateness and much more intent. Okay, so after I got that done, I had friends in Indiana who had said, hey, come and share with us what you mm -hmm. found. What are the things those schools are doing? So that's the way the consulting started. It's Rhonda Rose Consulting. And I would just start going to different people I'd met through IASP, that's our state organization, or the IPLI, started going to their schools mm -hmm. uh, to consult and work with them. So in 17, I got my nerve up to think, okay, I'm going to try this. I only had a couple of schools scheduled at the time, but that's what made me step out. And all it is, Dana, is me working with principals and leaders and teams in sharing. If you want your kids to be achieving at high levels, mm -hmm. these are the things that need to be in place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they don't struggle like I did. I struggled the entire time I was a, a building principal mm -hmm. with imposter syndrome and with thinking, well, I don't really know what I'm doing. Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? So I get a lot of joy out of, at least I hope, helping leaders not have to question themselves that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's really, um, cool how you were able to use the research that you did and build off of that and help these principals move their school forward. And you also said that, so besides just starting your consulting business, you also started then consulting with Solution Tree in early 21. Um, and then um, you use also their framework in some of your coaching. Uh, tell me about how you, um, maybe you talked to me a little bit about self-assessment in the pre-chat and how you would start then um, when you when you first visit a school and how, how they assess uh, needs in terms of the PLC and maybe other needs um, in terms of moving students forward. Yeah. yeah, so as I began back in 2017, going to different schools, mainly in Indiana and Kentucky, and working with these principals, a few of them would say, Ronnie, you just, you got to put this into a book which is the okay. last thing, Dana, I wanted to do. <laughs> I was an English major, but mm -hmm. writing is not something I've ever felt strong about. Well, um, I got through the idea of thinking, okay, maybe I do need to get this in writing so it doesn't always take me be, or my being present with these principles. So Solution Tree has been wonderful. I reached out to someone there, a contact that I know, and they were most helpful. It was a two-year process, mm -hmm. and they put you with a coach and a writing editor, and they reframed everything, Dana. The book looks nothing like what I originally had intended. They made it a lot better. <laughs> so what happened through that process was through this editor, Amy at Solution Tree, they came up with, okay, Rhonda, honestly, what you're saying is there are five actions mm -hmm. through the doctoral research and through everything that we know about high achieving schools, there are five actions and there are five schools that most often are seen in leaders. And it does represent, especially in the curricular areas, that PLC model 
Mm-hmm. you know, where we answer the four critical questions. So we work through that. So the actions are really, really important, Dana, about um, are we sharing a vision with our staff, right, about learning for the upcoming semester and year? Do we really clarify the work for people so that mm-hmm. every single adult in the building knows what he or she is supposed to be doing for that semester, just one semester at a time? Mm-hmm. A lot of clarity, is needed. Then we talk about the third action of building a really strong leadership team or guiding coalition Mm -hmm. around you. I had a leadership team, Dana, but they had no idea why they were on the team or what we were supposed to do. I had a lot Mm -hmm. of cleanup work to do there. And then the fourth action is looking at your time. How are you using time in the day at your school? And we go down through the student schedule, Mm -hmm. The teacher's schedule, are we using them right? Is there time for intervention? Every paraprofessional, how is their day being used? Every non-certified person in the building, and then much less the building leader. So we spend a lot of time on that fourth action, Mm -hmm. which is all about time. That's a big one. And the last one is just about leading effective meetings, right? Mm -hmm. Mine weren't so great, Dana. Mine were not so great. And Mm -hmm. I wanted to make it where, hey, you don't want to miss one of Rhonda's meeting because we get stuff done, right? Mm -hmm. We really get stuff done. They're meaningful and effective. I had a lot of work to do there. So those are the five actions. But Mm -hmm. Dana, what I hope makes this book a little bit different, Mm -hmm. as important as those actions are, then there are these five skills that I talk about because what I saw in the leaders that I got to go visit was this, they knew what they were doing. Okay. That's all Mm -hmm. the actions. And Dana, they were good to people. And that's the skill part. I had worked, you know, in my gracious, almost 40 years now in education, I had worked with leaders who knew what to do, but they weren't that nice or they were condescending Mm -hmm. or they were sorry casting nobody really wanted to follow them and then I worked a lot with people who were super nice kind the best people you'd want to meet but they weren't holding people accountable and they didn't really know what to do so the book is about combining both of these things your actions and your skills so under the skills I'll just run through these quick they're just about can you build trust with your people do you know how to build conflict because it's always part of leadership. I mean, always, it's always there. So can you handle conflict? Do you hold people accountable well with good Mm -hmm. intent? And then do you lean positive in the midst of all the negative stuff? Can you still stay in a positive leading mode? So we talk Mm -hmm. about that a lot. And I think the last chapter is just about that fifth skill of taking time to get quiet and reflect you know, to get even better. I didn't do that forever, Dana. It took me years to become a reflective leader. So it just takes the skills with the actions. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be the combination for this really, really hard job of leading a school. I think it's one of the toughest things out there to do, Dana. I really do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not getting any easier. (laughs) Oh, no. No. Yeah. Now I'm afraid we've got people going, who wants to do that Mm -hmm. at a time when we need the strongest, most courageous, knowledgeable and kind people out there? I mean, it's now, but I'm afraid things are so, so tough that we're losing some really, really good people. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So you offer consulting, uh, as you said, you go out to schools and districts. Uh, Is that mostly, as you said, um, Indiana and uh, Kentucky, or do you consult with uh, schools and districts nationwide? Now it goes nationwide, Dana. Since I started being a consultant with Solution Tree, people can reach out to Solution Tree and they will um, they will set me up with whatever school in the United States. I've got some upcoming in Georgia and upstate New York, um, Arkansas. So it just goes all over now, and usually. Usually when people reach out to Solution Tree, they will ask for me to present on the book. And when we talk about the book, we just start with that self-assessment that you mentioned. I'll always do a couple of 
pre-Zoom sessions with the leaders to go, okay, let's mm -hmm. talk down through here. And then they tell me, uh-oh, Rhonda, I think we've got some work to do here. So we mm -hmm. focus in, there's our feeling is going to be the, the biggest need. Usually mm -hmm. those are two days and then we can do follow-up virtually. Okay. So that's the consulting through solution tree. Um, on my own, people can reach out to me at there's a rondarose.com and there's a contact page there. But also my email is probably the easiest, Dana. And that email address for me is Rhonda R H O N D A dot bluebird at gmail.com. Okay. Because I do go to a lot of uh schools and work one-on-one -on -one if a principal mm -hmm. wants coaching just one-on-one -on -one. and then on that website they can see I only do a couple of cohorts a year but mm -hmm. like I'm getting ready to start a middle school cohort and I only take five principals mm -hmm. so there are five middle school principals across the United States and we start going down through the five actions and the five skills and we meet mm -hmm. together for five months so we meet together as a group and then we meet one-on-one -on -one. So I get to really dig in with them. I have enjoyed those so much. I'm tempted to add another one, but there just doesn't seem to be time. But if anybody's interested in joining a cohort, um, I think you said this will go out in September. So there would be a new one starting in January. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. those. And also when they join this cohort, they've got four new middle school principals, I just finished the elementary one, colleagues across yeah. this country that they can talk to about how do you handle your bomb threats or how do you handle, I just had one last week with inappropriate actions during the statewide assessment. Mm. So in each one of these sessions, Dana, I kind of do this session. We spend about a half hour on what would you do? And somebody always volunteers and go, okay, this happened to me. And they give mm -hmm. us all the details. Then we go around one at a time to say, did you think about this? What about this? Did you do this? Mm -hmm. And then they respond back, you know, in the next session to say, okay, here's how it went. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have to watch it because that's all they want to do. <laughs> it's just <laughs> do those real life scenarios. But it's, it's hard, like we just said, to be a leader. So yeah. to meet people across you know, the country, you can hear other perspectives and get some new ideas. So the cohorts have become very meaningful to me. I do a couple, maybe three each year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's a great way for people to connect, like you said, across the country, focus on a topic, get some ideas from other people, um, and then keep it together for those five months. So it's, it's kind of that intensive um, working through um, things. And do you uh, maybe use your book as a book study or some other books um, during that time or do you just focus on topics? Yeah. Okay. No, we use the book. We use the book. Okay. So in the five sessions for those five months, it's going to go, this is pretty obvious, but we do one action and one skill in okay. session one. Session two, I'll go action two with skill number two. So mm -hmm. I give them everything I've got, Dana. I will share all of my reproducibles. I share PowerPoints that I've made. And we talk about all these different activities that they can do with their leadership team, right? When you're in the okay. cohort, you're just going to get everything I got. One thing I found that principals love is when we talk about these systems and they've all, you know, so many principals have most of theirs built, but mm -hmm. we share together all of the systems. Like, oh, send me your new teacher induction system. So mm -hmm. I love the way they share and strengthen each other's, you know, systems within their schools that way. That's been a, a fun part of that group. So we we use my book as the foundation okay. for that time together. I will mention this, Dana. I'm glad you brought this up. For any district, and they can reach out to me again at that gmail address rhonda.bluebird at gmail.com for any district solution tree is good to allow me to do this but if a district orders like 20 books it might be 15 mm -hmm. to 20 somebody can just email me because i've been doing some free preview sessions and then a question and answer at the end free okay. no charge at all so if people find that they order 15 to 20 books i'm going to say reach out to me i'm happy to do that they can pick certain topics. Most of the time, uh, they leave it wide open for me to just answer any questions people have. 
So okay. if a district is doing a book study with my book and they have ordered, you know, that many copies, I am, I love doing that with people. There's no charge for that at all. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, I'll make sure they have the information to Solution Tree as well in the show notes. Well, we've had a great conversation today about your trench story as a new principal, uh, how you overcame that uh, with all those tasks to do, and then your work uh, now uh, consulting and helping others, um, and also your research that turned into a lot of what you do as a consultant. Out of everything we talked about today on the podcast, what's one thing you'd like listeners to remember? I'd like for them to remember that um, they can do it. You can do this work. I don't know if any of them are feeling overwhelmed or unappreciated or just, you know, I can remember feeling not very smart, like I'm not capable of doing this. Mm -hmm. And I want them to know, yes, you can. That's what substantiated for me when I got to go visit these schools. They were doing this work. It's just hard. And when I saw that it was hard on other principles too, I felt better, right? Mm -hmm. The work is hard, but leaders can do it. I think mm -hmm. the clarity of knowing, okay, I've got to hone in on these specific actions and I've got to be really genuinely good and caring to my people. You mm -hmm. can do it. Like, don't quit on us now. You mm -hmm. can do it. And if there's any way at all that I could be of any help, certainly reach out. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned um, your email a few times. If you can mention your website again, and then any social media where people can find you. Okay. So we got the email at rondarose.com mm -hmm. is my website. Okay. There's not a whole lot there. You can go to solution tree. Okay. Just Google that and then put in the title of the book. The title of the book again is the deliberate and courageous principle. The book's not just for principals. I would mm -hmm. say any teacher leader or leadership team member, but the deliberate and courageous principle. And then you can just click on there to chat with someone and anybody at all with Solution Tree can get you set up into my scheduling there. So uh, let's see, what else do I have? Okay, I guess I just have Twitter, which is okay. at what is my Twitter, Dana? I think it's at Dr. Rose. Hang on. Okay. I'm going to look. <laughs> ah. At Dr. Rhonda Rose, R H O N D A R O O S. Yes. Been trying to build those tweets. Great, great. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the Out of the Trenches podcast today and talking with you about your areas of expertise and um, how you want to help others. And I really appreciate the time today. Thank you, Dana. I've enjoyed it very much.